Start of Part 2 Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Natural Successor to Christ by Ahmad Didat Start of Chapter 1 The Final Messenger وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي And giving glad tidings of a messenger مِنْ بَعْدِي To come after me Ismuhu Ahmad, whose name shall be Ahmad. Surah Saf, chapter 61, verse 6. Multifaceted succession. Successions are of many kinds, like the birthright of the firstborn, as in Jewish law, or the ascending of the eldest son or daughter to the kingly throne, or by election to select a candidate by the vote of the majority, or theologically, an appointment by divine decree of God's chosen messengers, like the call of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, or Muhammad wasallam, who were appointed or anointed in consecration to their office. Muhammad wasallam, succession to Jesus Christ salam is multifaceted. 1. Chronologically, in history as a sequence of events in time. Number 2. By being chosen by God. Number 3. In the fulfillment of the prophecies of his predecessors. And last but not least, number 4. By bringing the guidance of God to perfection. For he will guide you into all truth, said Jesus Christ. Historically, the Holy Prophet Moses salam, preceded Jesus Christ salam, by some 1300 years and Muhammad wasallam, succeeded to that high office vacated by Jesus some six centuries later. It was the 12th of Rabiul Awal in the year of the elephant or the 29th of August 570 of the Christian era that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the praiseworthy, to whom all praise is due, was born in the sacred city of Mecca in pagan Arabia. His people, the Quraysh, remembered the year of his birth as the era of the elephant, because just two months before the birth of the child, Abraha al-Ashram, the Abyssinian viceroy of Yemen, had attacked the sacred sanctuary at Mecca at the head of his troops, riding a huge African elephant, a terrifying sight never to be erased from their memory and a still more shocking end to the invasion, the miraculous destruction of Abraha and his army as recorded in Surah Fil or the Elephant. Seest thou not how thy Lord dealt with the companions of the elephant? Did he not make their treacherous plan go astray? And he sent against them flights of birds striking them with stones of baked clay. Then did he make them like an empty field of stalks and straw, of which the corn has been eaten up. Surah Fil, chapter 105, verses 1 to 5. God's Own Standards God Almighty chooses his own messengers. He uses his own standards, although we may not always understand the wisdom of it. Paul cries the anomaly, for the Jews require a sign, miracles to convince, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Holy Bible, 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 22. But worldly wise as Paul was, he found that his wisdom was a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Greeks. God chose Moses, alayhis salam, a man who was a fugitive from justice and a stutterer, the Holy Bible calls him a man with uncircumcised lips. Exodus chapter 6 verse 12 Despite his difficulties when commissioned to confront Pharaoh, the great tyrant of the age, Musa alayhi salam cries out to the God of mercy. Moses said, O oh my Lord, expand for me my breast, make my task easy for me, and remove the impediment from my speech so that they may understand what I have to say. And give me a minister from my family. Aaron, my brother, add to my strength through him, and make him share my task. 
that we may celebrate thy praise without stint. And remember thee without stint, for thou art he that ever regardeth us. God said, Granted is thy prayer, O Moses. Surah Taha, Holy Quran, Chapter 20, Verses 25 to 36. Why suppose it? Then comes Jesus, alayhi salam, who was chosen by God. According to Christian teachings, he was a carpenter and the son of a carpenter with a dubious genealogy as recorded in the Gospels. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 3 verse 23. Acknowledged today by a thousand million Muslims that Jesus Christ salam, was born miraculously without any male intervention. The followers of Christ created two separate genealogies for a man who had no genealogy. Between the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, they gave this mighty messenger of God 66 fathers and grandfathers. And of these two separate lists, only one name is common to these two lists and that is of Joseph the carpenter, who does not fit in anywhere because, as Luke records above, he was only the supposed father of Jesus. Even Bishops Doubt In a shock survey of Anglican bishops in June 1984, it was revealed that 31 of their 39 bishops thought that Christ's miracles, the virgin birth and the resurrection might not have happened exactly as described in the Bible. In defence to the bishops of the Church of England, the Anglicans, the Church of Scotland most respectfully omitted any reference to the virgin birth from its most recent publication. A statement of faith, the topic of the miraculous conception of Jesus salam, is getting increasingly hotter for Western Christianity to handle as you see here. The Daily News, Durban, Tuesday, May 22, 1990 Virgin Birth Omitted by Church of Scotland London Direct reference to the Virgin Birth has been omitted from the Church of Scotland's new publication, A Statement of Faith, to avoid potential division among the Church's members. The Rev. David Beckett, Secretary of the Special Working Party that produced the publication, said the omission would move the Church of Scotland away from traditional Anglo-Catholic theology and towards the more liberal faction of the Church of England, championed by the Bishop of Durham, David Jenkins. The new document was debated by the Church of Scotland's annual General Assembly in Edinburgh. Designed to express the Westminster Confession, written in the 1640s in a more up-to-date language, the Church's panel on doctrine also took the opportunity to tailor the text on the virgin birth said Mr. Beckett, we want to come up with a statement that was inclusive rather than divisive, one that would be welcomed by the whole church, not just those who accept the virgin birth as a historical fact, but also by those who regard it as mainly pictorial theology. Leading churchmen claim the Westminster Confession has not been replaced, merely summarized and updated. Foreign Service and God chose Jesus alayhis salam. Jesus Christ alayhis salam, though spiritually rich in wisdom, light and truth, philosophized light-heartedly about the beggars of the world when he said, There came unto him, Jesus, a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. He, Jesus said unto them, For ye have the poor always with you, but poor may ye have not always. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 26, verses 7 to 11. But when destitution stared him in the face, when poverty, penury and need touched his own dear self, he cried pathetically. And Jesus said unto him, the foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man, referring to himself, hath not where to lay his head. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 8, verse 20.
also repeated in Luke chapter 9 verse 58 and yet God chose him Jesus alayhi salam unique and inscrutable are thy ways o lord Mustafa the chosen one it is he who sent amongst the unlettered a messenger from among themselves to rehearse to them his signs to sanctify them and to instruct them in scripture and wisdom although they had been before in manifest error sura juma chapter 62 verse 2 amazing as it may seem i am not amazed any more for this is his way he chooses an ummi non literate prophet for an ummi illiterate nation a poor shepherd people roaming unnoticed in its deserts since the creation of the world a hero prophet was sent down to them with a word they could believe see the unnoticed becomes world notable the small has grown world great within one century afterwards arabia is at granada spain on this hand at delhi india on that glancing in valor and splendor and the light of genius arabia shines through long ages over a great section of the world belief is great life giving the history of a nation becomes fruitful soul elevating great so soon as it believes these arabs the man muhammad and that one century is it not as if a spark had fallen one spark on a world of what seemed black unnoticeable sand but lo the sand proves explosive powder blazes heaven high from delhi to granada i said the great man was always as lightning out of heaven the rest of men waited for him like fuel and then they too would flame this concluded the speech of thomas carlyle one of the greatest thinkers of the past century it was friday the 8th of may 1840 his theme the hero as a prophet his audience were anglicans english christians the chosen people god chooses his messengers and god chooses his people in the realm of the spirit no nation was as favored as the jews and yet moses alayhi salam is made to bewail against his own people ye have been rebellious against the lord from the day i knew you holy bible deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 24 in this last will and testament of moses alayhi salam the israelites frustrate their meek and gentle messenger who is forced to rail against their communal stubborn resistance and arrogant attitudes to god's guidance for i knew thy rebellion and thy stiff neck behold while i am yet alive with you this day ye have been rebellious against the lord and how much more after my death holy bible deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 27 alas how true I am not going to philosophize on God's choice but in the very next chapter the fire of God's anger is kindled to a blaze and he decries the Jews they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God they the Jews have provoked me to anger with their vanities and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not of people I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation holy bible deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 21 Jews substituted anyone with the modicum of scriptural knowledge will be able to guess who in the eyes of these arrogant racist Jews is not a people a non entity and a foolish nation if not the Ishmaelite cousins the arabs who in the words of Thomas Carlyle have been roaming unnoticed in its deserts since the creation of the world the arabs Alexander the Great passed them by the Persians passed them by the Egyptians passed them by and the Romans passed them by it would have been an absolute liability for any nation to conquer and colonize them but the creator did not pass them by he picked them up from the depths of darkness and transformed them into torchbearers of light and learning to the world i will move them the Jews to jealousy this jealousy is a cultivated sickness remember sarah and hagar the two wives of abraham alayhi salam the friend of god the jealousy of sarah was bequeathed to her children and on to nations and tribes yet unborn 
Not so long ago, I read a book on the discovery of medicine written by a Jewish medical man. I can unfortunately not remember the name of the author and fail to retrace the book. However, the wordings of the tribute paid by this Jewish author to his Semitic Arab cousins have made an indelible impression on my mind. And I quote from memory, Goat herds and camel drivers sitting on the throne of the Caesars. Full of spite, venom and sarcasm, but how true! This is what God did and always does. He honors whom he wills. This is what he does to show his mighty hand power. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ If ye turn back from the path, يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ He will substitute in your stead another people. ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْسَالَكُمْ Then they would not be like you. Surah Muhammad Chapter 47 verse 38 it is surely one of the greatest miracles of history that from the backwater of Arabia there should have exploded a group of men, companions of a prophet, who within the space of a few brief decades were able to create a magnificent civilization extending from the Pyrenees to the gates of China. Abdul Badud Shalabi in Islam, Religion of Life The Last Warning the foregoing is the exact fulfillment of Jesus Christ, السلام, the last of the great Jewish prophets, own prediction of the displacement of the Jewish race in the spiritual guidance of man, in the words of the Master himself. Therefore I say unto you Jews, the kingdom of God shall be taken away from you Jews, and shall be given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 21, verse 43. Start of chapter 2 In the words of the Master Just one full prophecy وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ And remember, Jesus, the son of Mary said يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ O children of Israel, I am the messenger of God sent to you. مصدقا لما بين يديا من التورات confirming the law which came before me ومبشرا برسول يأتي من بعدي and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me اسمه أحمد whose name shall be Ahmed Surah Saf Chapter 61 Verse 6 A Common Trait just a cursory glance, a rapid reading, a hurried look at the previous verse will satisfy the Muslim that Jesus Christ salam, did indeed prophesy the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of God. The Muslim is puzzled at the stubbornness, vanity and tunnel vision of the Christian which prevents him from seeing his own inner light and listening to his conscience so as not to recognize the obvious. The Christian in turn is puzzled at the hard-hearted obstinacy of the Jews, a nation endowed with such creative genius, which despite a thousand and one prophecies in their own Bible, the Old Testament, regarding the coming of the Messiah, are totally incapable of recognizing their Lord and Savior. Are they both somewhat blind? No, neither the Jews nor the Christians are necessarily impervious to truth. The trouble is that we all pick up prejudices from childhood. The Americans call it being programmed. Simply reading the verses or listening to lectures and getting that smug satisfaction of being in the know will not help spreading the truth. This is the age of the every man. The age of the professionals is over. It is the duty of every Muslim, man, woman or child to get involved, eat according to his or her capacity. Memorize the verse with its meaning as well as the quotations preceding and those that follow so that you may feel equipped to share our deen with non-Muslims. There are no shortcuts to Dawa. Produce your proof. Perhaps this is not the first time you are reading or might have heard about the prophecies in the Jewish and Christian scriptures regarding the advent of the last and final messenger of God 
Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mercy unto all mankind. And perhaps you have at times made some half-hearted and skimpy efforts at suggesting that our Nabi Kareem was prophesied in the Holy Bible. But when proof was demanded, you were simply not able to, because you had not done any homework. Remember, there is no substitute for hard work. I believe what I say and I practice what I preach, insha'Allah. I have personally memorized various selections from the Bible in a dozen different languages, including Arabic and Hebrew. Not for sure, but because of the openings these snippets of religion create for me in propagating our faith to various language groups. Languages are the keys to people's hearts. In the land of the pharaohs. Notwithstanding many assurances, I got stranded in Cairo for lack of an entry visa. A kind gentleman from the Al-Azhar, who was trying to help us obtain the relevant documents, got frustrated with the delay and in order to attend to his Friday prayers, handed me and my son Yusuf to a young Egyptian lady, well-groomed in Western attire. After much effort and time, she returned to us with the good news. Forty dollars, she said. I asked. For what? The visas? She answered. Twenty dollars for me and twenty for my son. But I am a guest of the government, I insisted. She said that she knew nothing about it, so I smiled and paid. From the lady's speech and deportment, I had sensed that she was well educated and a lady of culture. So undauntedly, I asked her again what her name was in my broken Arabic. However, her name was too novel for me to remember. I asked her further, Are you a Muslim? She said, No, I am an Egyptian Christian. This was the opening I was waiting for. I began, Do you know that before Jesus Christ departed from this world, he told his disciples, and I started to quote, now in meticulous Arabic, a verse from the Arabic Bible, which I had memorized for opportunities just like this particular one. لَكِنِّي أَقُولُ لَكُمُ الْحَقِّ إِنَّهُ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ أَنْ أَنْطَلِقْ لِأَنَّهُ إِنْ لَمْ أَنْطَلِقْ لَا يَأْتِيكُمُ الْمُعَذِّبْ وَلَكِنْ إِنْ زَهَبْتُ أُرْسِلُهُ إِلَيْكُمْ إِنْجِيلُ يُحَنَّ The Translation I had no need to translate the above Arabic to her because as an Arab she understood the verse perfectly but for the benefit of those who do not know Arabic, I give you its exact equivalent from the English Bible, which I had also taken the trouble to memorize in my spare time. You can create that spare time also if you have true love for Allah's deen and wish to share it with others. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Holy Bible, John, chapter 16, verse 7. al muazzi the Comforter I implore my brethren who can read the Arabic quotation to memorize it together with the English translation above and create opportunities for using it. Learn the verses in conjunction with other languages that you know. There will be a definite all-round improvement in your fluency and proficiency in preaching Islam to other people. The word comforter above is Al-Mu'azzi in Arabic. I asked the lady, Who is the Al-Mu'azzi of this prophecy? She said, I do not know. She was honest. She did not beat around the bush. So I said that we are told in the Holy Quran that Jesus Christ had told his disciples, and giving glad tidings of a messenger, Min ba'di ismuhu Ahmad, to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. Surah Saf, Holy Quran, chapter 61, verse 6. I continued that this Ahmad is another name for Muhammad, and Muhammad is Muazzi. Very funny, she exclaimed. These Egyptians, meaning the Muslim Egyptians, take us to the cinema. They take us, meaning Christian women, to the dance, but no one ever tells us anything about this Muazzi. Through her, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala armed me with a 14 pound sledgehammer before leaving Cairo airport. Alhamdulillah. And did I use that sledgehammer? An integrated explanation of comforter slash muazzi of John 16.7 and Ahmed slash Muhammad of the Holy Quran 61.6 will be slotted in place when explaining the ayat heading this chapter. Biblical Confirmation Remember that in the 6th century of the Christian era, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was chanting God's words, which was systematically put into his mouth, the Arabic Bible had not yet been translated. He would never have known that he was fulfilling and confirming the utterances of his predecessor, Jesus Christ, to the letter. Only for the Israelites. وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَا and remember, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, Inni Rasulullah ilaykum, I am the messenger of God sent to you, the Jews. Jesus for Jews only. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go ye rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 10, verses 5 to 6. Not for dogs. And behold, a woman of Canaan came and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, my daughter is seriously possessed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered her and said, It is not fair to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 15, verses 22 to 26. It goes to the credit of this Jewish prophet that he practiced what he preached. In his lifetime he never converted a single Gentile, non-Jew, and of his hand-picked elect his twelve disciples, he made sure that they belonged to his tribe, so that his other prophecy might find fulfillment. When the Son of Man, Jesus referring to himself, shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye the disciples also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew chapter 19 verse 28 No new religion Musatti qallima bayna yadayya min at-tawrat Confirming the law which came before me. The Messiah was no mealy-mouthed messenger among the Jews. Like his predecessors Amos and Ezekiel or Isaiah and Jeremiah, he was trenchant in his condemnation of Jewish formalism and hypocrisies. His novel approach and militant preaching had created certain misgivings amongst the religious hierarchy. The scribes and the Pharisees came to him again and again to test him as to his bona fides. To allay their suspicions that he had brought no newfangled religion and that his was the confirmation of all the teachings that had gone before him, he says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law, Hebrew Torah, or the prophets. I am come not to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. Compare this phrase, confirming the law which came before me. The seven words at the beginning of this section on page 40, with the three verses of Matthew above, and you will not fail to note that there is no wordiness in the Quranic diction. It conveys God's message concisely, with clarity and precision. The father of truth chooses his own prophets, 
and he speaks to them in a voice stronger than the voice of thunder. Sayyid Amir Ali in the spirit of Islam. The Quran had come to confirm correct and complete divine revelation or whatever was left of it in unworthy hands. وَمَا كَانَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ This Quran is not such. هِنْ يُفْتَرَى مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ As can be produced by other than Allah. وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الْزَزِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ On the contrary, it is a confirmation of revelation that went before it. وَتَفْصِيلَ الْكِتَابِ And a fuller explanation of the book. لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ مِتْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ wherein there is no doubt from the Lord of the Worlds. Surah Yunus, Holy Quran, Chapter 10, Verse 37 The Good News وَمُبَشِّرٍ بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي And giving glad tidings of a messenger مِنْ بَعْدِي إِسْمُهُ أَحْمَدِ To come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. I will not apologize nor am I called upon to apologize for reproducing here verbatim a word-for-word -word commentary on the word Ahmed from Abdullah Yusuf Ali's English translation. But before I do that, permit me to pay a fitting tribute to the King Fahad Holy Quran printing complex in al Madina al Munawwara, which is turning out millions of Holy Qurans in many different languages. Their reason for using Yusuf Ali as a base for their reproduction is summed up in these words. A number of individuals have in the past ventured to translate the Qur'an, but their works have generally been private attempts, greatly influenced by their own prejudices. In order to produce a reliable translation free from personal bias, a royal decree, number 19,888, dated 16-8-1400 Hijri, was issued by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Fahad ibn Abdul Aziz, at that time the Deputy Prime Minister. The translation of the late Ustad Abdullah Yusuf Ali was consequently chosen for his distinguishing characteristics, such as a highly elegant style, a choice of words close to the meaning of the original text, accompanied by scholarly notes and commentaries. Out of over 6,000 profound explanatory notes in Yusuf Ali's translation, the following is just one of three explaining the prophecy in the words of Jesus alayhi salam, regarding the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the messenger of god note number 5438 ahmad or muhammad the praised one is almost a translation of the greek word parikletos in the present gospel of john 1416 1526 and 167 the word comforter in the english version for the greek word parikletos which means advocate one called to the help of another, a kind friend, rather than comforter. Our doctors contend that Pericletos is a corrupt reading for Pericletos, and that in the original saying of Jesus, there was a prophecy of our holy prophet Ahmad by name. Even if we read Periclete, it would imply to the holy prophet, who is a mercy for all creatures, Holy Quran, chapter 21, 107 and most kind and merciful to the believers. Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 128. But when he came to them with clear signs, they said, this is evident sorcery. This concludes ayat, verse 6 of surah chapter 61 under discussion. The Prophet of Islam was foretold in many ways, and when he came he showed forth many clear signs, for his whole life from beginning to end was one vast miracle. He fought and won against odds. Without learning from men he taught the highest wisdom. He melted hearts that were hard, and he strengthened hearts that were tender and required support. In all his sayings and doings men of discernment could see the working of God's hand, let the skeptics called it sorcery, jugglery, magic, forger and juggler. No, no. This great fiery heart, seething, simmering like a great furnace of thoughts, was not a juggler's. Thomas Carlyle, page 88 in his book, Heroes and Hero Worship. 
and they called his miraculous fulfillment of prophecy magic, jugglery, enchantment, that which became the most solid fact of human history, Islam. Start of Chapter 3 Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the paraclete. To the sincere seekers of truth, it is obvious that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the promised paraclete or comforter, alternatively called helper, advocate, counselor, etc. of the prophecies of Jesus in the Gospel of St. John. There are millions of Christians, men and women like our good lady at the Cairo airport, who are hungry for this simple straightforward message, but alas, we can only weep with Jesus for our utter ineptitude. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the workers are few. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 9, verse 37. Language of Jesus In the Holy Quran, God Almighty puts the name Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the mouth of Jesus. The Christian controversialist, Bible thumper, hot gospel that flippantly scoffs at the suggestion. The Christian missionary does not deny that Jesus did make a prophecy about someone coming after him, but Ahmad to him seems too far-fetched. The most commonly accepted name by Christendom is Comforter. It does not really matter. Comforter or any other equivalent term will do. We will settle for Comforter as used in the most popular Bible translation, the King James Version. Ask your adversary your disputant whether Jesus spoke the English language? Most definitely not, any Christian will say. If you are sharing this with an Arab Christian, then you can ask him whether his Lord used the word Mu'azzi. Surely not, because Arabic was not his language. Did Jesus prophesy Umtokozisi, Comforter in Zulu, or Truster from the Afrikaans Bible? The answer again is a definite no. The Christians are rightfully boasting that they now have translated the complete Bible into hundreds of different languages and the New Testament, in which this prophecy abounds, into more than 2,000 different languages and dialects. So the Christian genius has invented more than 2,000 different names in 2,000 different languages for this one candidate, Comforter. Numa, Ghost or Spirit the Church Fathers had developed a sickness by translating names of people, for which they had no right to do. For example, like Esau to Jesus, Messiah to Christ, Cephas to Peter and so on. The closest one can ever get to the original utterance of Jesus in the Christian scriptures is the Greek word parakletos, which also has to be rejected because the Master did not speak Greek. But let's not be difficult for the purpose of this discussion and accept the Greek word parakletos and its English equivalent, comforter. Ask any learned Christian man as to who the comforter is. You will unmistakingly hear, the comforter is the Holy Ghost from John 14.26. This sentence is only part of verse 26. We will deal with the verse fully in due course. But first, we must educate the Christian mind with regards to this misnomer, Holy Ghost, Numa, is the Greek root word for spirit. There is no separate word for ghost in the Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, and the Christians now boast 24,000 different manuscripts in their possession, of which no two are identical. The editors of the KJV, the King James Version, alternatively called AV, the authorized version, and the Douay, the Roman Catholic version of the Bibles give preferences to the word ghost instead of the word spirit when translating Numa. The revisers of the RSV, Revised Standard Version, the most up-to-date version of the Bible are going back as claimed to the most ancient manuscripts. These revisers, described as 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, who courageously replaced the shady word ghost with the word spirit. Hence, from now on, you will read in all modern translations the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. However, the Christian crusaders and the televangelists stubbornly cling to the spooky, ghostly past. 
they will not opt for the newer versions. It's better fishing with the old bait, the KJV and the RCV, Roman Catholic version. With the new change in spirit, the verse under scrutiny will read, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Holy Bible, John chapter 14, verse 26 You do not have to be a Bible scholar of any caliber to sense that the expression, which is the Holy Spirit, is actually an interpolation. It ought to be in parentheses, in brackets, like my words have been interpolated in the quotation, that is, emphasis added. Although the editors of the RSV have expunged dozens of interpolations from their boasted revised standard version, they have retained this jarring phrase which contradicts other explicit predictions of Jesus on the subject of the Comforter itself. Holy Spirit is Holy Prophet it may be noted that no biblical scholar of any standing has ever equated the Paracletos of John in the original Greek with the Holy Ghost. Now we can say with one breath that if the Comforter is the Holy Spirit, then that Holy Spirit is the Holy Prophet. As Muslims, we acknowledge that every true prophet of God is holy and without sin. But whenever the expression, the Holy Prophet, is used among Muslims, it is universally accepted as referring to the Holy Prophet Muhammad So even if we accept the above incongruous saying, the Comforter which is the Holy Spirit, as Gospel truth, even then this prophecy will fit Muhammad like a glove, without any stretching of its meaning. The same John, who is supposed to have authored the Gospel bearing his name, also penned three more epistles which are also part of the Christian Bible. Amazingly, he has used the same terminology of Holy Spirit for Holy Prophet. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Holy Bible, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 You can observe that the word spirit is used here synonymously with the prophet. A true spirit is a true prophet, and a false spirit is a false prophet. But for the so-called born-again Christians who see only with the eyes of emotion, I recommend that they lay their hands on C.I. Schofield's authorized King James Version of the Bible, who, with an editorial committee of nine deities adding their notes and comments, when they come to the first word spirit in the above verse, they should give a notation to compare it with Matthew 7.15, which confirms that false prophets are false spirits. So according to St. John, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Prophet, and the Holy Prophet is Muhammad وسلم, the Messenger of God. A valid test. But St. John does not leave us in the air, guessing the true from the false. He gives us an acid test for recognizing the true prophet. He says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Holy Bible, 1 John, chapter 4, verse 2. According to John's own interpretation, in verse 1 above the word spirit is synonymous with the word prophet. So verse 2, spirit of God would mean prophet of God, and every spirit would stand for every prophet. You have a right to know as to what the holy prophet Muhammad wasallam says about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is spoken by name no less than 25 times in the Holy Quran. He is honored as Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, as salihin the righteous, Kalimatullah, word of God, Ruhullah, spirit of God, Masihullah, Christ of God. Behold, the angels said, O Mary, God giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him. His name will be Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, held in honor in this world and the hereafter, and of the company of those nearest to God. Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 45. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the other. 
The Comforter in 1426 can never be the Holy Ghost, because Jesus had already explained, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Holy Bible, John chapter 14, verse 16. The emphasis here is on the word another, a different one, an additional one, but of the same kind, yet distinctly different from the first. Who is then the first comforter? The Christian world is unanimous that in this case of the speaker himself, Jesus Christ is the first comforter, then the other. The one to follow must be of like nature, subject to the same conditions of hunger, thirst, fatigue, sorrow and death. But this promised comforter was to abide with you forever. No one lives forever. Jesus was mortal. So must the coming comforter also be mortal. No son of man can ever be immortal. Every soul shall have a taste of death. Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 185. Alive in their teachings. The soul does not really die, but when it separates from the body at the time of the death of the body, the soul will get a taste of death, but our Comforter was to abide, continue, endure forever. All Comforters abide with us forever. Moses is here with us today in his teachings, Jesus is here with us today in his teachings, and Muhammad wasallam also is here with us in his teachings today. This is not my novel idea, trying to justify the preposterous. I say this with conviction and on the authority of Jesus Christ himself. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus tells us the story of the rich man, poor man. At death, both find themselves at opposite ends, one in heaven and the other in hell. The rich man dives simmering in hell, cries to Father Abraham to send the beggar Lazarus to assuage his thirst. But when every plea fails, he, as a last favor, requests that Father Abraham send the beggar back to earth to warn his living brothers against their impending doom if they heeded not the warnings of God. But Abraham said, If they, those still alive on earth, won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't listen even though someone rises from the dead to warn them. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 16, verse 31. Jesus uttered the above fact centuries after the demise of the prophets of Israel like Jeremiah, Hosea, Zechariah, etc., and over 1300 years after Moses. The Pharisees at the time of Jesus, and we today can still listen to Moses and the prophets, for they are still alive and with us here today in their teachings. You of the time. It is said that the Comforter was promised to the immediate disciples of Jesus and not to a people 600 years later. And he, God, shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Holy Bible, John chapter 14, verse 16. Surprisingly, the Christian sees no difficulty in justifying the fulfillment of prophecies since the world began. And after over a millennium, when Peter in his second sermon to the Jews reminds them, For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Holy Bible, Acts chapter 3, verse 22. All these, ye, you, and yours, are from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, when Moses addressed his people and not the Jews at the time of Peter, 1300 years later. The Gospel writers have put the same compromising words in the mouth of their master which are begging for fulfillment for 2000 years. I think just one example will suffice. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily most assuredly, I, Jesus, say unto you, Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man, Jesus, be come. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 10, verse 23. Scanning the Clouds These early followers of the Messiah forever ran forlornly fleeing persecution. They ran from one city to another in Israel, 
scanning every dark cloud for the descent of Jesus in his second coming. The missionaries see no anomaly in their millennium of unfulfilled prophecies. God Almighty did not keep them waiting for even a quarter of the time for the advent of the Parakletos, the Comforter or Ahmad, which is another name for the Praised One. Let them show gratitude to God by accepting the last and final messenger of God, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Advent of Comforter Conditional The Comforter is definitely not the Holy Ghost because the coming of the Comforter was conditional whereas that of the Holy Ghost was not as we observe in the prophecy. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go for, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Holy Bible, John chapter 16 verse 7. If I don't go, he won't come. But if I go, I will send him. There are numerous instances in the Holy Bible about the coming and going of the Holy Ghost before the birth and departure of Messiah. Do yourself a favor. Please verify these references in your Bible. B.C. Before Christ's birth. 1. And he, John the Baptist, shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 1 verse 15. Number 2. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 1 verse 41. Number 3. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 1 verse 67. AC after Christ's birth. Number four. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, Simeon. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 2, verse 26. Number five. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, Jesus. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 3, verse 22. From the above quotations, before and after the birth of Jesus, one cannot help admiring St. Luke who appears to be a specialist on the Holy Ghost. We may well ask the Christians after the descent of the dove, with whose help did Jesus, peace be upon him, perform his many miracles, if not with the help of the Holy Ghost? Let the Master himself tell us, when accused by his own people, the Jews, that he was working in league with Beelzebub, the chief of the devils, to work his miracles, Jesus rhetorically questions them. How can Satan cast out Satan? The Jews imputed that the spirit of holiness, the spirit of God, which was helping him was devilish. This was treason of the highest order. So he gives them a dire warning. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, it shall never be forgiven. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. The Holy Ghost is none other than what Matthew himself has described in three verses before quoting the Master. But if I, Jesus, cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come upon you. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Compare the same statement by another Gospel writer. But if I, Jesus, by the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. Holy Bible, Luke Chapter 11, verse 20. You do not have to be a Bible scholar to understand that the expressions A, finger of God, B, spirit of God, and C, Holy Ghost are all synonymous phrases. So the Holy Ghost was helping Jesus in his ministry. The Holy Ghost was also helping his disciples on their missions of preaching and healing. If there is still any doubt in your minds about the workings of the Holy Ghost, then please read empty promise. As my Father hath sent me, even so I send you, the disciples of Jesus. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Holy Bible, John chapter 20, verse 21 to 22. This was surely no empty promise. The disciples must have received the gift of the Holy Ghost so if the Holy Ghost was with 1. John the Baptist, 2. Elizabeth, 3. Zacharias, 4. Simeon, 5. Jesus, and 6. The Disciples of Jesus. 
then all this makes nonsense of the saying that if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. Therefore the Comforter is not the Holy Ghost. The verse under discussion is John 16, 7. I remember the thrill and joy I got out of it when quoting it in Arabic to the Coptic Christian lady in the land of the Pharaohs. The pleasure is immense when expounding biblical verses in the standard native language of a country or locality. I have done it in a dozen different vernaculars. Won't you master the above verse in a language or two of your choice for the good of Islam? Afrikaans, a unique language. Of all the language in which I have mastered the verse in questions, I have derived the greatest excitement and benefit from Afrikaans. It is a language of the ruling race in South Africa. It is the youngest of the world's languages. The language is unique. In fact, every language is unique. But Afrikaans is in a class of its own. It also happens to be the mother tongue of half the Muslim population of South Africa who were brought here as prisoners of war and enslaved by the Christians. That is simply by force of circumstances. For their immediate benefit and for your information, I reproduce the verse here. Mar ek se jul de warhid. Dit is vir jul vurdelik dit ek vigan. Want is ek nie vigan nie. Sal de truster. Nie na jul kom nie. Mar is ek vigan. Sal ek hom na jul stur. Johannes chapter 16 verse 7. Believe it or not, it is the genius of this language that it uses four negatives. Nie, 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 to prove a positive. The departure of Jesus is an absolute imperative for the coming of the truster, the comforter to come. This verse in the language has opened many doors for me other than religious and it locks the door against the idea of the comforter which is the Holy Ghost. John chapter 14 verse 26 Disciples not fit we now come to the four most comprehensive and decisive verses in John chapter 16 to solve the enigma of the successor to Christ. For Jesus did truly say, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Holy Bible, John chapter 16 verse 12. We will later tie up the phrase many things from the above verse with guide you into all truth from the verse that follows when discussing it. For now, let us discuss the phrase, you cannot bear them now. The truth of this statement, ye cannot bear them now, is repeated monotonously throughout the pages of the New Testament. And he, Jesus, saith unto them, the disciples, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 8, verse 26. And Jesus said unto him, Peter, O thou of little faith, Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 14, verse 31. He, Jesus said unto them, the disciples, O ye of little faith, why reason among yourselves? Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 16, verse 8. And he, Jesus said unto them, his disciples, Where is your faith? Holy Bible, Luke chapter 8, verse 25. We must bear in mind that this is not the indictment of Jesus on the indecisiveness of the Jews, but on his very own elect. He stoops down to the level of little children to make things plain to his disciples, but he is compelled to burst out in frustration. And Jesus said, Are ye even yet without understanding? Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 15, verse 16. And when he was provoked to breaking point, he rails against his chosen ones. O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Holy Bible, Luke chapter 9 verse 41. Own family thought him mad. If Jesus would have been a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would happily have committed that honorable Harakiri suicide. Sadly, he was the most unfortunate of God's messengers. His family disbelieved him for neither did his Jesus brethren believe in him. John chapter 7 verse 5. In fact, they went to the extent of wanting to apprehend him, believing that he was mad. And when his relatives heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, Jesus, for they said, He is beside himself. 
Holy Bible, Mark chapter 3, verse 21. Who were these friends and relatives of Jesus who had concern for their sanity? Let Reverend J. R. Demolo, M.A. in his one-volume Bible commentary tell us on page 726. He says, From V31, just ten verses following the above quotation, they appear to have been his mother and brethren. His family said he is beside himself, meaning that he is not right in his head. The scribes said he is possessed by the devil himself. It is not, however, implied at all that his family was in sympathy with the scribes, the learned men of the Jews, their apprehension being simply that his mind was unsettled and that he needed to be put under restraint. Jesus rejected by his nation. That was the verdict of the close relations of Jesus. What then was the response of his own nation, the Jews, after all his beautiful preachings and mighty miracle workings? His disciple puts it very mildly. He came unto his own, the Jews, and his own received him, Jesus, not. Holy Bible, John chapter 1 verse 11 Actually his own mocked him, scorned him, and vehemently rejected him to the extent of making an attempt to crucify him despite 2000 years of Christian persecutions and pogroms and now their overweening love and infatuation for them so as to salve their own conscience. The Jews as a people and as a whole can never accept Jesus as their savior, their deliverer, their God simply because of their one sound judgment that no Jew can ever accept another Jew as a God. It is only in Islam that the Jews, the Christians and the Muslims can find accommodation, all believing in Jesus Christ for what he really was, one of the mightiest messengers of God and not as God or his son. Disciples deserted him. What was the response of the chosen twelve of his own mother and brethren? Mark chapter 3 verse 34 As he called them, I will allow Professor Momory to describe it in his own inimitable words. His immediate disciples were always misunderstanding him and his work, wanting him to call down fire from heaven, wanting him to declare himself king of the Jews, wanting to sit on his right hand and on his left hand in his kingdom, wanting him to show them the Father, to make God visible to their bodily eyes, wanting him to do and wanting to do themselves, anything and everything that was incompatible with his great plan. This was how they treated him until the end. And when that came, they all forsook him and fled. Quoted from Sayyid Amir Ali in his The Spirit of Islam, page 31. It was most unfortunate that Jesus Christ had no real choice in selecting his disciples. They let him down as no other group of devotees had ever let down their prophet before. It was no fault of the master. He bewailed his plight. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 Truly, this is not the clay out of which a new Adam could be made. He passes on that responsibility to his successor, whom he calls here the spirit of truth, that is the prophet of truth, the prophet of righteousness. Spirit and prophet synonymous. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Holy Bible, John chapter 16 verse 13 It has already been established that biblically the word spirit is used synonymously for prophet by the same author in 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. Hence the spirit of truth would be the prophet of truth, a prophet in whom truth is personified. He had walked through life so honorably and industriously that he had won for himself even from his pagan fellow countrymen the noble designation of as sadiq the truthful one, and Al-Amin, the honest, the upright, the trustworthy, the man of faith who never broke his word. His life, his personality, his teachings are the veritable proof of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the embodiment of truth, Al-Amin, the spirit of truth. Start of Chapter 4 Total Guidance Many and All As promised, we will now combine, I have yet many things to say unto you, from verse 12, 
with he will guide you into all truth from John 16 12 and 13 if the Christian still persists that the spirit of truth of this prophecy is the Holy Ghost then ask him or her whether in their language does many means more than one also if all in the above verse means more than one if you get a halting wavering hesitant yes then close the book it is not worth pursuing dialogues with opinionated fools but if you get the answer yes with alacrity then proceed the one prophesied by jesus was to unravel many things which he had left and said as well as to guide humanity into all truth there are many problems facing mankind today for which we are fumbling for answers can you please give me one new thing that the alleged holy ghost gave to anybody in the past 2000 years which jesus christ had not already given in so many different words i don't want many i'm looking for just one no solution from holy ghost believe me in my 40 years of questioning i have not come across a single christian with a single new truth inspired by the holy ghost yet the promise was that the coming comforter he will guide you into all truth if the spirit of truth of this prophecy is the holy ghost then every church and denomination and every born again christian is claiming the gift of the holy ghost the roman catholics claim that they have the whole truth because of the so-called indwelling of the holy ghost the anglicans make the same claim and the methodists the jehovah's witnesses the seventh day adventists the baptists the christadelphians etc etc not forgetting the born again who claim to be numbering over 70 million in the united states alone you have the right to demand solutions from them on the authority of the holy ghost for the problems listed below number one alcohol number two gambling number three fortune telling number four idol worship devil worship number five racism number six problem of surplus women etc etc problem of alcohol the republic of south africa with a small white population of 4 million among its total population of 30 million has over 300,000 alcoholics in neighboring zambia kenneth konda calls such people drunkards it is recorded that the colored in south africa have five times the amount of alcoholics as any other race in the country for the indians and the africans no statistics are available for their respective drunkards jimmy swaggart the televangelist record in his book alcohol that the united states has 11 million alcoholics and 44 million heavy drinkers and he like a good muslim goes on to say that he sees no difference between the two to him they are all drunkards the rampant evil of drunkenness is universal the holy ghost has not yet made its pronouncement on this evil through any church christendom winks at drunkenness on three flimsy pretenses based on the holy bible a give strong drink hard liquor to him who is perishing one who is dying and wine to those who are bitter of heart let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more holy bible proverbs chapter 31 verses 6 to 7 a very good philosophy to keep the subject nations under subjugation you will agree his very first miracle b jesus was no killjoy the imbibers say he turned water into wine in his very first recorded miracle in the bible jesus saith unto them fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim and he saith unto them draw out now when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and saith why thou hast kept the good wine until now holy bible john chapter 2 verse 7 to 10 since this alleged miracle wine continues to flow like water in christendom sober advice c saint paul the 13th self-appointed disciple of christ the real founder of christianity advises his new convert protege timothy born of a greek father and a jewish mother drink no longer water 
but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Holy Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23 the Christians accept all the Bible quotations on stimulating and intoxicating drinks given above as the infallible word of God. They believe that the Holy Ghost inspired the authors to pen such dangerous advices. Reverend Dumolo seems to have some qualms about the verse. He says, It teaches us that if the body needs the stimulant of wine, it is right to take it in moderation. Abstinence, the only answer. There are thousands of Christian priests who have been lured into alcoholism by sipping and so-called mild wine in the church rite of the Holy Communion. Islam is the only religion on the face of the earth which prohibits intoxicants in total. The Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam had said, Whatever intoxicates in greater quantity is forbidden even in smaller quantity. There is no excuse in the house of Islam for a nip or a tot. The Kitab al-Haqq the Book of Truth, one of the titles of the Holy Quran, condemned in the strongest terms not only the evil of alcohol, but also items 2, 3 and 4, namely gambling, fortune-telling and idol worship, with just a single stroke. O oh ye who believe, innamal khamr wal maysir, most certainly intoxicant and gambling, well ansab dedication of stones well azlam and divination of arrows rijsum min amal shaytan are an abomination of satan's handiwork fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun shun such abomination that ye may prosper surah maida chapter 5 verse 93 when this verse was revealed Wine barrels were emptied in the streets of Medina, never to be refilled. This simple straightforward directive has created of the Muslim Ummah religious community the biggest society of teetotalers in the world. USA fails with prohibition. The question arises, how is it that this spirit of truth, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, succeeded with one verse whereas mighty America with the brain power of the nation and the money power of the government, supported by its powerful propaganda machinery, failed with prohibition, the law outlawing alcohol. Who coerced the American nation to enact prohibition? Which Arab nation threatened this mighty power with if you do not prohibit alcohol in your country? We will not supply you with oil. Not the Arabs as there was no such thing as oil as a political instrument in the hands of the Arabs during the twenties to act the United States. It was an intellectual awareness among the American founding fathers based on study and statistics which brought them to the conclusion that intoxicants must be banned. They failed, notwithstanding the fact that the overwhelming majority of the nation was Christian and that it was they who had voted their congressmen into power. It is rightly said that that which comes from the brain intellectually tickles the brain. But that which comes from the heart and soul of a man will move the heart. The verse just quoted above from the Holy Quran on prohibition had and has the power for change. We will allow Thomas Carlyle to reveal the source of that power. If a book comes from the heart, it will contrive to reach other hearts. All art and autocraft are small amount to that. One would say the primary character of the Qur'an is this of its genuineness, of its being a bona fide book. High Spirituality, a Source of Power All the beautiful thoughts, words and expressions, never mind how artistically constructed, remain like ringing bells or clanking cymbals unless they are backed up by a powerful personality charged with high spirituality. And that type of super-spirituality comes only as Jesus put it through fasting and prayer. Matthew chapter 17 verse 21 Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practiced what he preached. After his demise, someone asked his dear wife Aisha Siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha about the lifestyle of her husband. She said he was the Qur'an in action. He was the walking Qur'an. He was the talking Qur'an. 
He was the living Qur'an. If these men and women, noble, intelligent, and certainly not less educated than the fishermen of Galilee, had perceived the slightest sign of earthliness, deception, or want of faith in the teacher himself, Muhammad's hopes of moral regeneration and social reform would all have been crumbled to dust in a moment. Spirit of Islam by Sayyid Amir Ali Critics Hero If it is said that these are the words of a devoted believer about his beloved, then let us hear what a sympathetic Christian critic had to say about his hero prophet. A poor, hard-toiling, ill-provided man, careless of what vulgar men toil for, not a bad man, I should say, something better in him than hunger of any sort, or these wild Arab men, fighting and jostling three and twenty years at his hand, in close contact with him always, would not have reverenced him so. They called him prophet, you say. Why, he stood there face to face with them, bare, not enshrined in any mystery, visibly clouting his own cloak, cobbling his own shoes, fighting, counselling, ordering in the midst of them. They must have seen what kind of a man he was. Let him be called what you like. No emperor with his tiaras was obeyed as this man in a cloak of his own clouting during three and twenty years of rough actual trial, I find something of a veritable hero necessary for that, of itself. Hero and Hero Worship by Thomas Carlyle Problem of Racism For he, the Spirit of Truth, will guide you into all truth. Holy Bible, John chapter 16, verse 13 Not Without a System it is very easy for the followers of any religion to talk glibly about the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, but how is this beautiful idea to be implemented? How to devise a system to bring mankind into a single brotherhood? Five times a day, every Muslim is obligated to gather together at the local mosque to strengthen himself spiritually. The black and the white, the rich and the poor, people of different nationalities, of varying hues are made to rub shoulders in the daily Salat, the Muslim at prayer. Once a week, that is on Fridays, he has to congregate at the cathedral mosque, the Dhamma Masjid for a wider gathering from the surrounding districts. And twice a year during the two Eids at still a larger venue, preferably in the open air for a vaster communion, and at least once in a lifetime at the Kaaba, the central mosque in Mecca, for an international gathering, where one can witness the blonde-haired Turk, the Ethiopian, the Chinese, the Indian, the American and the African all get leveled up in the same pilgrim's garb of two unsewn sheets. Where is there such a great leveler in the religious rites of other faiths? The infallible precept as enunciated in the Book of God is that the only standard recognized by God is on the basis of one's conduct one's behavior towards one's fellow human beings and not because of one's race or riches. These are the only true basis on which the kingdom of God can be established. All this does not mean that the Muslim is immaculate, that he is altogether free from the sickness of racism, but you will find the Muslim the least racist of all the religious groupings strutting the world today. Problem of Surplus Women Nature seems to be at war with mankind. It appears that it wants to take revenge for his cleverness. Man will not listen to the healthy, practical solution to his problems, which a beneficial benevolent providence offers him. So it says, go simmer in your soup, in a manner of speaking. It is an accepted fact that at birth the ratio of male and female is about equal everywhere. But in child mortality, more males die than females. Amazing, the weaker sex, at any given time, there are more widows in the world than widowers. Every civilized nation has a surplus of women. Great Britain, 4 million. Germany, 5 million. Soviet Russia, 7 million, etc. But a solution acceptable to the problem of the mighty United States of America will be a solution acceptable to nations everywhere. The statistics of this most sophisticated nation on earth is more readily verifiable. America, oh America, 
We learn that the USA has a surplus of 7 to 8 million women. It means that if every man in America got married, there would still be 7 to 800,000 women left over, women who would be unable to get their share of a husband. One thing we do know, and that is that every man will never get married for so many different reasons. Man gets cold feet and finds many excuses. A woman, even if frigid, would not mind getting married. She would marry even if it is just for shelter and protection. But the American problem of surplus women is compounded. 98% of its prison population is male. Then they have 25 million sodomites. Euphemistically, they call them gays, a once beautiful word meaning happy and joyous, now perverted. America does everything in a big way. She produces everything mighty, mighty in promoting God and also mighty in promoting the devil. Let us for once join the mighty televangelist now fallen Jimmy Swaggart in his prayer in his well-researched book, Homosexuality. He cries, America, God will judge you, meaning that God will destroy you. For if he does not judge you, destroy you, he, God, might have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah for their hasty, utter destruction because of their practice of homosexuality or their wanton gratification of unnatural lust. New York as an example. The city of New York has one million more women than men. Even if the total male population in this city mustered enough courage to unite with the opposite sex in matrimony, there would still remain one million women without husbands. But to make things worse, it is reputed that one third of the male population in this city is gay, homosexuals, sodomites. The Jews, a very vociferous lot in every controversy, remain quiet as mice for fear of being labelled backward Easterners. The church, with their millions of born-again votaries claiming to be the dwelling houses of the Holy Ghost, are also silent on this topic. The founders of the Mormon church, Joseph Smith and Brigham Young, claiming a new revelation in 1830 preached and practiced unlimited polygamy to solve the problem of surplus women. The present-day prophets of Mormonism have abrogated the teaching of their church fathers to placate American prejudice on the subject of polygamy. What is the poor American, Western, European surplus women to do? They have literally gone to the dogs. Only solution, restricted and regulated polygamy. Al-Amin, the prophet of truth, the spirit of truth, under inspiration of God supplies the solution to their unfortunate plight. God ordains. Marry women of your choice, two or three or four. But if you fear that you will not be able to deal justly with them, then marry only one. Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 3. The Western world fiends tolerance towards the millions of sodomites and lesbians in their midst. It is a joking matter in the West for a man to keep a dozen mistresses and beget a dozen bastard children every year. Such lecherous creatures are proudly labelled as studs. Let him sow his wild oats, but don't hold him responsible, says the West. Islam says, make man responsible for his pleasures. There is a type of man who is prepared to take an extra responsibility, and there is a type of woman who is prepared to share a husband. Why place obstacles in their way? You mock at polygamy, which was practiced by the prophets of God as recorded in the Holy Bible. You forget that Solomon the wise had a thousand wives and concubines as recorded in the good book. 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 3 A healthy solution to your momentous problem and yet you smugly wink at the gratification of unnatural lust by sodomites and lesbians. What a perversion! Polygamy was practiced by the Jews and the pagans in the times of Jesus. He did not say a single word against it. Not his fault. The Jews gave him no peace to propound solutions. His was a natural cry. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. John chapter 16 verse 13 Comforter to be a man If I take the liberty of quoting the prophecy under discussion, 
with an emphasis on the pronouns, you will agree without any persuasion that the coming comforter was to be a man and not a ghost. How about when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Holy Bible, John chapter 16 verse 13. Please count the number of he's in the above verse. There are seven, seven masculine pronouns in a single verse. There is not another verse in the 66 books of the Protestant Bible or in the 73 books of the Catholic Bible with seven masculine pronouns or seven feminine pronouns or with seven neuter genders. You will agree that so many masculine pronouns in one verse ill befits a ghost, holy or not. Non-stop interpolations When this point of the seven masculine pronouns in a single verse of the Bible was mooted by the Muslims in India in their debates with the Christian missionaries, the Urdu version of the Bible had the pronouns presently changed to she, 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 so that the Muslims could not claim that this prophecy referred to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man. This Christian tishanery, deception, I have seen in the Urdu Bible myself. This is a common trickery by the missionaries, more especially in the vernacular. The very latest views I have stumbled across is in the Afrikaans Bible. On the very verse under discussion, they have changed the word truster, comforter, to wursprach, mediator, and interpolated the verse Diehelikis, meaning the Holy Ghost, which phrase no Bible scholar has ever dared to interpolate into any of the multifarious English versions. No, not even the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is how the Christians manufacture God's word. Nine masculine pronouns. The only other place an author has unknowingly used so many masculine pronouns for this mighty messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is given below. His gentle disposition, his austerity of conduct, the severe purity of his life, his scrupulous refinement, his ever ready helpfulness towards the poor and the weak, his noble sense of honor, his unflinching fidelity. His stern sense of duty had won him among his compatriots, the high and enviable designation of Al-Amin, the trusty, spirit of Islam by Sayyid Amir Ali. Al-Amin, the faithful, the trustworthy, even the spirit of truth, John chapter 14, verse 17. This expression is a figurative way of saying that speaking truth would be so characteristic of him that people would regard him as truth personified, exactly as Jesus salam, said about himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life, John chapter 14, verse 6, that these noble qualities are personified in me. Follow me. But when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, John chapter 16, verse 13. Then you must follow him, but prejudices die hard. Therefore we must work harder. But believe me, with the laser truth that Allah has given us, we can change the world with only a fraction of the energy that the Christian is expending. Source of Revelation How by when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Holy Bible, John chapter 16, verse 13 I have consistently been using the King James Version in my biblical quotations. But for greater clarity, I give below alternate rendering from some different versions of the above emphasized sentence. For he will not speak on his own authority, but will tell only what he hears, the New English Bible. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, New International Version. For he will not be presenting his own ideas, but he will be passing on to you what he has heard, the Living Bible. This spirit of truth, this prophet of truth, Al-Amin, will not be speaking spiritual truths on his own impulse, but he will speak on the same basis as his previous comforter. Jesus had spoken, For I speak not from myself, but the Father that sent me. He hath given me the commandment, what I should say, and what I should speak. Even as the Father hath said unto me, so I speak. Holy Bible, John chapter 12, verses 49 to 50. 
in an identical manner God Almighty testifies his revelation to his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam nor does he say aught of his own desire it is no less than inspiration sent down to him he was taught by one mighty in power surah najm chapter 53 verses 3 to 5 this is how god communicated with all his chosen messengers whether abraham moses or jesus alayhi salam ajma'in it would be absurd to think that the spirit of truth is the holy ghost because we are told that he will not speak from himself but what he hears surely not from himself god a trinity it is universally accepted in christendom all orthodox christians who believe in what they call the holy trinity that the father is god the son is god and the holy ghost is god but they are not three gods but one god let an erudite christian theologian like the reverend demelo tell us of this indivisibility in the solubility of the christian's triune god commenting on the we will come of john chapter 14 verse 23 he says where the son is there of necessity is the father also as well as the spirit for the three are one being different forms of the subsistence and manifestation of the same divine being this passage is a stretch that the person of the holy trinity are inseparable and contain one another please don't worry you are not really expected to understand the above verbiage in short the christian believes that the three i beg your pardon the christian says one all the three are supposed to be omnipresent and omniscient and as such lead us to an amusing and ridiculous conclusion jesus according to the christians agonized on the cross at calvary being inseparable the father and the holy ghost also must have agonized with the son and when he died the other two died with him little wonder we hear the cry in the west god is dead don't laugh all this imposes on us a more somber responsibility of extricating our christian brethren from the spiritual quagmire into which they are wallowing start of chapter 5 fulfilled prophecies and he will show you things to come holy bible john chapter 16 verse 13 refuge only for a while the christians put great weight on the fulfillment of prophecies muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam fulfilled many prophecies of the old and the new testaments to them the prediction of events is considered to be the function of true prophecy true prophethood the prophet of islam uttered many prophecies which are recorded for posterity in the holy quran here are a few taken at random number 1 verily he who god almighty ordained the quran for thee he will bring thee back to the place of return surah qasas chapter 28 verse 85 place of return is a title of the holy city of mecca during the hijrat migration when the holy prophet was fleeing from mecca to medina it was a hopeless situation most of his followers had already migrated to medina now it was his turn together with abu bakr as siddiq he had reached a place called juhfa when this assurance was given by god that once again he will return to his birthplace mecca and so he did he migrated as a refugee and god returns him as a conqueror fulfilling yet another prophecy and he moses said the lord came from sinai and rose from seir unto them he shined forth from mount paran that is in arabia and he muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with 10000 saints from his right hand went a fiery law for them holy bible deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 2 superpowers in conflict number 2 the roman empire has been defeated in a land close by but they even after this defeat of theirs will soon be victorious within a few years with god is the decision in the past and in the future on that day shall the believers rejoice Surah Rum chapter 30 verse 2 to 
The above prophecy was revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the year 615, 616 of the Christian era. The Christian Empire of Rome had lost Jerusalem to the Persians, and Christianity had been humbled in the dust. In this holocaust between two of the superpowers of the day, the Moshriks, polytheists of Mecca, derived vicarious pleasure in the discomfiture of the Romans by the pagan Persians. The pagan Arabs naturally sided with the Persians in their destructive zeal and thought that the destruction of the Christian power of Rome would also mean a setback to the message of the Prophet, the true successor to Christ. While the whole world believed that the Roman Empire was being killed by Persia, it was revealed to him that the Persian victory was short-lived and that within a period of a few years the Romans would conquer again and deal a deadly blow at the Persians. Abdullah Yusuf Ali Within ten years of the revelation of this divine prediction, the prophecy was fulfilled. Challenge of the Quran Number 3 The Holy Prophet claimed that the Holy Quran was from God Almighty and that it was revealed to him by inspiration. The proof of its divine authorship is its own beauty and nature and the circumstances in which it was promulgated. To prove the veracity of his claim, he has placed before you many surahs. Can the unbeliever produce one like it? This is a standing challenge. An eternal prophecy of mankind's inability to equal or excel or to rival successfully any of its chapters. Your plea, I don't know Arabic, is useless. There are millions of Christian Arabs living today. The Christians boast that there are at least 10 to 15 million Coptic Christians in Egypt alone. And these are not all Falahins. Here is the challenge of God in his own words. A. This Qur'an is not such as can be produced by other than Allah. Holy Qur'an, Chapter 10, Verse 37 B. Say, if the whole of mankind and jinns were to gather together to produce the like of this Qur'an, they could not produce the like thereof, even if they backed up each other with the help and comfort. Surah Bani Israel, Chapter 17, Verse 88 See, or do they say, He forged it? Say, bring then a surah like unto it, and call to your aid anyone you can besides Allah if it be that ye speak the truth. Surah Yunus, chapter 10, verse 38. D. And if ye are in doubt as to what we have revealed from time to time to our servant, then produce a surah like thereunto, and call your witness or helpers if there are any besides Allah, if your doubts are true. But if ye cannot, and of a surety you cannot, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones, which is prepared for those who reject faith. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verses 23 to 24. It is now 1400 years since the above challenges, but mankind has singularly failed to produce anything similar to something better. This is an eternal testimony of the divine origin of the Holy Quran. Christian Arabs had a try. The Arab Christians in the Middle East, not to be outwitted, launched a 16-year project lately and produced selected portions of the New Testament in Arabic with a wholesale borrowing of words and phrases verbatim from the Arabic Quran. It is an ignoble attempt. In this unashamed plagiarism, every chapter of this new Arabic New Testament of theirs begin with the verse of the Holy Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Surah Fatiha, chapter 1, verse 1. Can you beat that? There are many challenges and prophecies in the Holy Quran and in the Ahadith, traditions of the Prophet, which can be expounded. It is a neglected field. Perhaps books can be written on the subject. I trust that Muslim scholars will take up the challenge. But let me end this theme of prophecy with one last reference from Allah's Kalam, the Book of God. Islam to prevail. He. It is He who has sent His Messenger with guidance and the religion of truth. 
that he may proclaim it over all religion, even though the associators may detest it. Surah Saf, chapter 61, verse 9. Within decades, the above promise became true. Islam prevailed. The two superpowers of the day, the Persian and the Roman empires, crumbled at the hands of the Muslims, and for centuries the power of Islam predominated from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Alas, the Muslims are in the doldrums today. But fear not, the world of Islam is arising. There is hope. Even non-Muslim visionaries in the West have predicted its destiny to be in the skies. Africa is a fair field for all religions, but the religion which the African will accept is a religion which best suits his needs. And that religion everyone has a right to speak on the subject says is Islam. The Shape of Things to Come by H. G. Wells. If any religion has a chance of conquering England, nay Europe within the next hundred years, that religion is Islam. George Bernard Shaw. Without any real effort on the part of the Muslims, we are told by the Westerners themselves that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world today. I hope this pleasant news does not lull us to sleep. The promise of God is true. The destiny is there. Only a little exertion is required on our part. Allah can transform nations and peoples by his own will, but he has given us the privilege of serving his deen by a personal self-sacrifice. To be an effective soldier in this battle, Arm yourself with John 16:7 in one or more languages and watch how Allah fills you with more knowledge. It is our destiny to master, supersede and bulldoze every ism, never mind how much the unbeliever may be averse to the message of Islam. Glorifying Jesus He, the Spirit of Truth, shall glorify me, Jesus, for he shall receive of mine and shall shew it unto you. Holy Bible, John Chapter 16, verse 13. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Holy Bible, John, chapter 15, verse 26. This promised Comforter, even the Spirit of truth in whom truth is personified, when he comes, will bear witness to the truthfulness of the Messiah and absolve him from the calumnies of his enemies. This Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-Amin, the prophet of truth eminently succeeded in doing. He made it possible that today, a thousand million Muslims believe in Jesus Christ alayhi salam as one of the mightiest messengers of God. They believe in his miraculous birth, which many modern day Christians, even bishops do not believe. And they also believe in his many miracles, including those of giving life to the dead by God's leave and healing those born blind and the lepers by God's leave. What a mighty testimony! Listen to the moving terms of the story of his Annunciation. Miraculous Conception And mention in the book the story of Mary when she withdrew from her people to a place in the east. And she placed a screen to screen herself from them. Then we sent unto her our spirit that appeared to her as a man in all respects. She said, I take refuge in the All-Merciful from you, if you fear Allah. He said, I am but a messenger come from your Lord, to announce to you the gift of a holy son. She said, How can I have a son, seeing that no man has touched me, and I am not unchaste? He said, Even so your Lord has said, Easy is that for me and that we may appoint him a sign unto men and a mercy from us, it is a thing decreed. So she conceived him, and withdrew with him to a distant place. Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. At the present moment, a billion Muslims throughout the world accept the immaculate conception of Jesus salam on the authority of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone. Jesus, his mother Mary, and the whole Christian world can never thank Al-Amin, the spirit of truth enough. Jewish response to Jesus O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I, Jesus, have gathered thy children together 
even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, but she would not let me. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 23 verse 37 That mighty messenger of God went after the Jews like a hen after her chickens, but they turned on him like vultures to tear him into pieces. Not satisfied with their relentless assaults and harassment and the eventual attempt on his life, they charged his mother for having ill begotten him in sin. That day the Jews rejected faith, and they uttered against Mary a grave false charge. Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 156. What was that grave false charge? The nearest to uttering the actual calumny, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the true glorifier of Jesus alayhi salam in John chapter 16 verse 13 is made to record O sister of Aaron thy father was not a man of evil nor thy mother a woman unchaste Surah Maryam chapter 19 verse 28 What say the Talmudists? The Jewish charge of the illegitimacy of Jesus alayhi salam and the adultery of Mary is referred to here as an insinuation of the Jews questioning Mary's chastity. The Holy Quran does not stoop down to even reproducing the actual monstrous slander. Now compare this Quranic terminology with what the erudite and famous Reverend Demelo, backed by no less than a team of 16 Christian divines, all reverends and deities, as to their choice of words in recording the calumny of the enemies of Christ. The Jewish Talmudist said, The son of the adulterer, that is of the Virgin Mary, brought magic out of Egypt, by cuttings which he had made in his flesh, Jesus practiced magic and deceived and drove Israel to idolatry. It is interesting to notice that Muhammad indignantly repudiated these Jewish calumnies. Tumulo's Bible Commentary, page 668 Evangelist Corroborates Jews Josh McDowell, described as a graduate of Wheaton College and Magna Cum Laude graduate of Talbot Theological Seminary, and who is reputed to have spoken to more than 5 million students and faculty at over 550 universities in 53 countries, seems to have done more research than the whole galaxy of biblical scholars. Mentioned above on the subject of the Jewish Talmud regarding the birth of his Lord. In his book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, just to prove that Jesus was not a myth but a historical person, he quotes extensively from the Jewish Talmud without any inhibitions. I give you below a few brief excerpts from pages 85 to 86 of his book. Tol dot Yeshu, Jesus is referred to as Ben Pandera. Ben Pandera means son of Pandera, a Roman soldier alleged by the Jews to have raped Mary to produce her illegitimate offspring. May God forbid. May he forgive us for even reproducing such blasphemies. Yeb 4.3.49a Arshimian bin Azai said concerning Jesus, I found a genealogical role in Jerusalem wherein was recorded, such an one is a bastard of an adulteress. Joseph Klausner adds to the above, Current editions of the Mishnah add, To support the words of our Yahoshua, who in the same Mishnah says, what is a bastard? Everyone whose parents are liable to death by the Beth Din. That Jesus is here referred to seems to be beyond doubt. Missionary lolls his tongue. Josh McDowell, the great evangelist, born again Christian, worshipper of Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, lolls his tongue when quoting calumnies of the enemies against his Lord and God, Jesus. And the Christian world laps it up. His books are bestsellers in Christendom. A taste for filth and insults has been created in the votaries of Christ. I refuse to quote further from that filthy narration. If Jesus has such devoted friends, what need is there for him to have enemies? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really was the true friend, the comforter, the helper, the advocate, the glorifier, the testifier of these prophecies in John chapters 14, 15 and 16. Let me repeat the ungrudging tribute of his enemies to this benefactor of Jesus, his mother Mary, and humanity at large. It is interesting to notice that Muhammad, 
indignantly repudiated these Jewish calumnies, Reverend Demolo and his associates. Start of Chapter 6 Extremism Condemned We will now allow the spirit of truth to lay the ghost of Jewish and Christian extremism and put the record straight regarding their controversies about the Messiah. The Jews said that Jesus salam, was the illegitimate son of Mary because he could not point a finger to a father. The Christians for the same reason made him into a God and a begotten son of God. Just one verse to debunk this lie. O oh, people of the book, do not go to extremes in your religion, nor say of Allah anything but the truth. Verily, Christ Jesus the son of Mary was no more than a messenger of Allah and his word which he bestowed upon Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him, so believe in Allah and his messengers. Say not Trinity, desist, it will be better for you, for your Allah is one God, glory be to him. Far exalted is he above having a son, to him belongs all things in the heavens and the earth, and enough is Allah as a disposer of affairs. Surah Nisa, Chapter 4 Verse 171 Note 657-6 on the above verse Just as a foolish servant may go wrong by excess of zeal for his master, so in religion people's excesses may lead them to blasphemy or a spirit the very opposite of religion. The Jewish excesses in the direction of formalism, racialism, exclusiveness, and rejection of Christ Jesus have been denounced in many places in the Holy Quran. Here the Christian attitude is condemned, which raises Jesus to an equality with God, in some cases venerates Mary almost to idolatry, attributes a physical son to God, and invents the doctrine of the Trinity, opposed to all reason, which according to the Athanasian Creed, unless a man believes, he is doomed to hell forever. The attributes of Christ are mentioned here. 1. That he was the son of a woman, Mary, and therefore a man. 2. But an apostle, a man with a mission from God, and therefore entitled to honor. 3. A word bestowed on Mary, for he was created by God's word, be, kun, and he was. Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 59. 4. A spirit proceeding from God but not God. His life and his mission were more limited than in the case of some other apostles, so we must pay equal honor to him as a man of God. The doctrines of Trinity, equality with God, and sonship are repudiated as blasphemies. God is independent of all needs and has no need of a son to manage his affairs. Abdullah Yusuf Ali Nothing from Self you gave this spirit the truth, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, too much credit when you allege that he wrote the preceding verses and further authored more than 6,000 other verses of the Noble Qur'an. He cries to us again and again in the Book of God that this is not my handiwork. It is no less than an inspiration sent down to him. Holy Qur'an, chapter 53, verse 4 Exactly as it was prophesied by Jesus alayhi salam, for he shall not speak from himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Holy Bible, John, chapter 16, verse 13. Christian Trilemma All the testification and glorification by this another comforter does not placate the Christians, because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not pander to their prejudices. To them glorification meant to deify Jesus, to make him into a god, Instead of solving the dilemma, whether Jesus died on the cross as a man or as a god, they have now invented a trilemma, a word not to be found in any dictionary in the world. Josh McDowell, the traveling representative for Campus Crusade for Christ International in his book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, actually uses his new inspired by the Holy Ghost conundrum for his chapter 7, Trilemma, Lord, Liar or Lunatic. You have now guessed it. The three L's. He wants his readers to answer whether Jesus Christ is your Lord, God, or was he a liar or a lunatic. Very ingenious, you will agree. 
No Muslim could utter that Jesus Christ was a liar or a lunatic. Then what? It is more than any dilemma. It is actually blasphemy of the highest degree. But he is blinded by his preconceived notions. Roger Bacon, the philosopher who was born too soon, rightly said, It is easier for a man to burn down his own house than to get rid of his prejudices. Wisdom of the Child To say of any man that he is God, the begotten Son of God, or that his father is God, is not an honor but an insult. A French peasant understood this distinction better than the millions of erudite Christian scholars walking the earth today. It is reputed that Louis XV, King of France, was a very lecherous person. No woman was safe from his debaucheries. After his death, when his son was well settled on the throne, a rumor spread around Paris that an exact duplicate of the young kid was seen roaming about the capital. The king was naturally intrigued to see his double. It did not take the king's men long to have the rustic from the countryside presented before the king. The king was amused by the stark resemblance to himself and his late father. He was tickled to have a dig at the poor farmer. He politely asked, Did your mother ever visit Paris during my father's reign? No, the rustic replied. But my father did. This was a death knell for the king, but he had asked for it. Don't go to extremes. The rank hatred of the Jews which led them to slander Jesus and his mother is bad, and the over-infatuation of the Christians for Christ is also bad. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of God, condemned both these extremes and elevated Jesus to his true status as the Messiah, a great prophet and reformer. Love him, respect him, revere him, follow him. But do not worship him, for worship is due to God alone, the Father in heaven, Allah. This is true glorification, for he shall glorify me. Holy Bible, John, chapter 16, verse 14. Historically, morally and prophetically, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last and final messenger of God, the spirit of truth, is the only one to guide mankind into all truth. He is preeminently the natural successor to Christ. Epilogue Dear reader, it has been suggested that some Christian propagandists might lure you from your exposition of the preceding pages by dangling before you the Pentecostal experience. Pentecost was a Jewish festival day celebrated on the 50th day after the beginning of corn harvesting. The Jews gathered in Jerusalem from far and wide for the feast. Peter with the eleven together with others were in one place when suddenly they heard the roaring of a mighty windstorm in the skies above them where they were sitting. This electrified the people and they began to speak in tongues, in dialects and languages foreign to themselves. Some marveled while others mocked, saying, They are drunk, that's all. It reminded them of the babbling at Babel. Genesis chapter 11 verse 9 the Christian missionaries contend that that was the fulfillment of what Jesus had prophesied in John chapters 14, 15 and 16. Astounding as the whole drama may sound, Peter the one the master had appointed to feed my lambs, feed my sheep, John chapter 21 verses 15 to 16, rose to defend the disciples saying, These men are not drunk. It's much too early for that. People don't get drunk so early in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Holy Bible, Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Pentecost was the fulfillment of the prophecy of the prophet Joel and not of any predictions of Jesus. Christendom believes that Peter was inspired to record the same, both obviously tickled by the Holy Ghost not a single word is recorded anywhere as to what these apostles of Christ had babbled or murmured on Pentecost Day. Yet as to the Comforter, he was to guide mankind into all truth, proving once again that the Comforter is not the Holy Ghost. End of Part 2